In this app, we're going to display two views side by side, just like Apple's Mail and Notes app, or Settings, and many more. In SwiftUI, this is done by placing two views inside a navigation view, then using a navigation link in the primary view to load views in the secondary view. Now, we're going to start our project again, nice and simple, building the primary view, building the list of ski resorts in this application, along with the country they belong to and how many ski runs it has, how many literal pieces you can uh, ski down, often, often called uh, trails or slopes. Now, I provided some assets for this project you want to go ahead and snag from GitHub. If you're not already downloaded them, please fetch them now. And um, what I want to do is copy resorts.json into your project navigator over here, like this. Choose copy items if needed. And then in the assets uh, catalog, go ahead and drag in all these images, these ones right here. And there are stacks of them. And you'll notice I've included 2x and 3x images for the various flags. So here's Austria and Canada and then France and Italy and so forth. They're all there, but for the individual resorts, you'll see uh, there's only 2x places. So you can see um, there's a Deer Valley here, for example. There's only a 2x picture right there. Um, this is intentional. I've given only 2x for the resorts and 2x and 3x for the countries because uh, the countries will be used for both retina and super retina devices. They'll be uh, scaling up smoothly. But the resort pictures, they are big anyway. They're bigger than they need to be. They're designed to have enough size in them to scale up smoothly to even an iPad Pro running in landscape. And so they're more than big enough without also adding a 3x resolution as needed. It's not required. You know, an iPhone Max is not much, much smaller than an iPad. So it's not needed. Anyway. To get our list of resorts up and running real quickly, we're going to design a struct to hold a single resort. You know, what does Deer Valley have here? And this will be loading from our resorts.json file, this thing you added a moment ago, with all the various resort information inside, which means uh, it'll be codable. And also, it'll be inside a list of things in SwiftUI, so it has to be identifiable. What identifies these uniquely? And you can see there's actually an ID field right here describing the name uniquely of this place. Um, I should add, before we get into this, this data is mostly fictional, mostly make-believe fictional stuff. So please don't use it in shipping applications. It's, you know, believable, but not actually real. So don't try and ship this. Anyway, let's go ahead and just convert this to a uh, Swift struct we can work with. So press Command N, make a new file, choose a Swift file, then call this thing resort.swift. And we'll give it this code. There's a new struct called resort, which is codable, so we can load it, and identifiable, so we can show it uniquely inside a for each and Swift UI. We'll say it as an ID string, a name string, a country string, a description string, an image credit string, who took the photo of this playing for that, that resort, has a price int, the price range, a size int, a snow depth int, elevation int, then runs, that's the pieces or slopes to work with, at an int. And finally, facilities, what does it have on site? And that's an array of strings. And that exactly matches our resorts JSON file. So you can see ID name, country description, image credit, price three, again, that is a, a range, one, two, or three. Uh, size, small to be large, uh, depth in centimeters of snow, elevation in meters of height, how many runs it has, and what kind of facilities it has. Is in it uh, has great cross-country resorts, uh, places, for example. Anyway, so that's all loading in there. And as usual, it's a really, really good idea. I strongly encourage this in all Swift applications to add an example value to your model structs. So it's easier to show working data in your designs in your Xcode previews. This time, though, there are quite a few pieces of data required to get an example up and running. Uh, and so I think it's helpful if they have meaningful data, you know, a decent long description with real sort of text in there, an actual country picture, an actual image credit and so forth that reflects the real data we're working with. 
And so I don't particularly want to try and hard code one like we've done previously. I don't want to try and create one by hand. Instead, we're going to load an array of resorts from JSON stored in our app bundle. That resorts.json file here, which means we can reuse the same extension we made earlier, the bundle decodable.swift extension we had earlier. If you have yours to hand, copy it straight into the new project, boom, you're done. If not, I'm gonna assume not, we'll do it again here real fast. Uh, press Command N, make a new Swift file, and call this thing bundle dash decodable dot Swift. And this will generically decode any kind of JSON that can be decoded from our app bundle. So we'll say as an extension on bundle that has a decode method, generic with some kind of type of object, which is decodable. Give it a file string, and it will send back that decode object. We first attempt to find the URL for that thing in the bundles URL for resource, that file, with extension nil. So it'll be in the file directly. If that fails, we'll do fatal error, fail to locate that file in the bundle. Again, fatal error will crash your code immediately if it's called, which is fine here. It's not a problem here because we're saying decode this thing from my app bundle. If it's missing, it shouldn't be crashing. It shouldn't, shouldn't be missing, sorry, so just, just crash. Make sure it's in your app bundle. If it was downloaded from the internet, fine. The internet could be down or slow or who knows what, the server could have changed, could be missing. But not in your app bundle, it's gotta be there. So it's a user error if you do that. Uh, then guard let data equals try data contents of that URL. Again, if we can't do that, fatal error saying fail to load that file from bundle. Again, just crash out. If we cannot read a file from our bundle, it's just not gonna work. Our program is dead as far as we're concerned. Something's really, really wrong. Then make a decoder, a new JSON decoder here. And we'll say, uh, guard let our loaded data is try question mark decoder dot decode. Our T we asked for, whatever we asked for is decodable from that data. And if that fails, again, Fatal error, fail to decode, file from bundle. And that'll only happen if you've put the wrong file in your app bundle and shipped it to the app store somehow. Don't do that, that's what tests are for. And then if we're still here, return loaded. So send back the T we found the URL for, loaded into data with, and then decoded into the actual data we asked for. That's our same thing we had before, just retype, you can see how it works. Anyway, with that in place, we can now add some properties to resort that will store our example data. And there are two ways of doing this. Uh, the first option is to add two static properties, one to load all resorts into an array, and one to store the first of those uh, items in the array. So we take something like this, static let all resorts be an array of resort, equal to bundle.main.decode, resorts.json and then static let example be all resorts zero so load me all the resorts into the array and then load the first one here the second option is to kind of collapse that down into a single line of code you know we could have said um this whole bundle main decode thing yeah fine let example equals parens that I've got the parens in there because we want to say as an array of resorts, so it's a one-liner, like that. Then, zero, and I'll get the same result. Um, of the two, honestly, I prefer the first option because it's just much clearer what it means. It's simpler to read, and it's, it's more use in the future if you want to try and uh, show random examples rather than always showing the first one. Um, and that's, I prefer the first one as a result of that. I would say, in case you're curious, when we say static let like this for properties of a struct, struct, they don't get created in memory. The, the code doesn't actually run until they're used. Uh, and it, it'll mean that Swift effectively makes them lazy automatically. They won't create until actually re referenced. And this means when we try and read resort.example, then Swift will be forced to create all resorts because it relies on all resorts zero and then it creates all resorts and then finally runs a bundle main uh, decode thing here and this means we can always be sure 
the two properties run in the exact correct order. There's no chance of you know calling resort.example just not working because all resorts wasn't ready yet. It'll do it in the right order for us. Anyway, now that our simple resort struct is done, we can also use that same bundle extension inside our content view over here uh, that loads all our resorts into a simple array we can work with. So I'll say, let resorts be an array of resort equal to bundle.main.decode resorts.json, like that. I'm gonna drag this JSON file down because quite frankly, it should be down there below our Swift code. Anyway, that's our data being loaded in correctly, which is fine, step forward. For the body of our view, this, this thing up today is e down here, we're gonna use a navigation view with a list inside showing all our resorts by default. And each row inside there, we're gonna show a small flag of whichever country it belongs to, the name of the resort, as well as how many runs it has. Now, the exact flag size we're gonna use is fairly small. It'd be 40 times 25 or so, so a little wider than it is high. And that's smaller than our flag image actually is and has a slightly different aspect ratio, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that with resizable plus scale to fill and a little bit of custom frame around it so it'll look all fine. Make it look slightly better, we're gonna add a little custom clip shape plus a uh, stroked overlay so it stands out more clearly on the screen. And when it's tapped, we'll browse through to a detail view showing more information. We haven't made that yet. So we'll just show the text of the resort name for now, temporary thing as a placeholder. Anyway, in our body, we'll say, I want a navigation view with a list of resorts inside, with one resort coming in, and inside there is a navigation link pointing to the text of resort, come on, capital T, resort.name. So again, it's a little placeholder to get started. And the label for that will be the image of our resort country. So we'll say, I want resort.country here, resizable and scale to fill with a uh, frame, I'll do a nice small one, width 40, height 25. You can see it kind of working already on the other side there, boom. Uh, with a clip shape of rounded rectangle, corner radius, corner radius of five, like that. And you can see some of these flags like the, well, most of them really, in fact, currently all of them, <laughs> um, have white somewhere, ending on white. So that's obviously in the US flag perhaps, but the French one particularly, and. Uh, Canadian one, even, even the Austrian one, don't look great because white, going out to white in light mode. And that's where overlay comes in. We can say I want overlay over this whole thing. And this will say as another round rectangle with corner radius five, but I'm gonna add a stroke in black with a line width of one. Just to be edging around the flag. So you can see now, uh, when the flag kind of goes out to white, it doesn't matter because there's a little black edge around it, making it clear the flag has ended onto the background now at this point. So that's our flag area. We also want to have uh, the information for this particular resort in here as well. So that'll be the, the name uh, of the place and a nice chunky font plus a number of runs and so forth. So after the image here, I'm going to say there's a V stack with alignment of dot leading text resort dot name in a font of headline like that. There we go. Boom. Plus a uh, text of uh, used to interpolation resort dot runs runs in foreground color secondary like that. Boom. Awesome. Uh, finally, uh, I would add a, a uh, title to our list down here. So that would be just here, navigation title will be uh, resorts. We should see that. Phew, okay. Let's go ahead and give that a quick run. All being well, you should see it looks good enough. Um, I can scroll around a little bit and tap on say Deer Valley and it says Deer Valley, it's a little placeholder. Uh, let's go to Snowbird, sounds nice. Um, so it's kind of working, right? This actually works the list here, so it's a good start. But when you take your phone to landscape, what you see depends on the device you have. So I have here an iPhone 13 Pro and it looks more or less correct. But if I were running an iPhone 13 Pro Max, if you've watched the earlier videos, you'll know that behaves differently. As does, I think, nearly all iPads 
it's complicated based on the size of the iPad, and orientation of the iPad, and uh, whether it's split screen or slide over or full screen or who knows what, it still behaves differently. So here we are on a 13 Pro Max in portrait, looks the same, but in landscape, we get a blank screen. So which device are you using affects the result you're seeing so far, and this happens because SwiftUI wants to show a detail view here. That's what it expects to see. But we haven't created one yet. So let's fix that next.